Today on Florida Sportsman Best Boat, we're showcasing boats that can take you offshore most of the days, but are still agile enough for fishing inshore. These are center consoles in the 24 to 26 foot range that can fish with the big boys and fit in your driveway. Center consoles in this category have many nice features. They're no harder to handle than a much smaller boat. Four to six anglers have plenty of room to fish for trout and redfish in the bay, snook and tarpon in the inlet, or venture out into the Gulf Stream for some exciting dolphin or wahoo action. Some key features to look for in this class are a molded engine bracket built into the hull design gives you more cockpit room. In-deck fish boxes keeps your catch fresh and doesn't take up the room that a cooler does. Ample storage can let you take enough gear for an extended weekend trip. Leaning post seating will give you a secure place to stand while underway and a seat high enough to see over the console. Easy access to the boat systems is better for maintaining your boat or making simple repairs. A center console with enough room for built-in electronics. A large live bait well is a must for the serious fisherman. A windshield will keep wind and spray off your face and make long runs more comfortable. If you want a boat that can take you out to the cobalt blue waters offshore, grass flats in the river, and be trailered without a permit, a center console in the 24 to 26 foot range might be the best boat for you. Join our host Dave East and Rick Riles as we feature three center consoles that let several anglers fish for a variety of species. Contender 24 Sport, the Everglades 255, and the Stewart Boatworks 26. They'll be conducting walkthroughs, test drives, and reviewing key features, all to help you decide if this is the best boat for you. Welcome to Best Boat. I'm Dave East, boating editor of Florida Sportsman Magazine. And I'm Captain Rick Riles, program director of Florida Sportsman Radio Live. Today we're on the Treasure Coast, and we're going to look at a category of 24 to 26 foot center consoles. Oh, Dave, that's a real sweet spot for me. I got to tell you, those boats are big enough you get the opportunity to run to the Bahamas, yet they're small enough to where the family can handle them, and they can do a whole lot of different activities. What I like about them is they're mobile. You can pull them behind a modest sized SUV or a pickup truck. They're easy to trailer and they're a lot more efficient than the great big center consoles we've seen in the past. I can take this boat and fish for trout, I can fish for redfish, tarpon, I can run outside, kingfish, dolphin, and in the summertime, if the weather's decent, I wouldn't hesitate to make a hop across the Gulf Stream for the Bahamas. I'll tell you another factor, Dave. This is about the biggest size boat that you've still got the option of going twin engine or dual engine for maximum performance. Well, the three boats we brought today really shows this category of boats. We've got the 24 Contender Sport, We've got the 255 Everglades, and we've got the 26 Stewart Boatworks. They've each got their own niche, Dave, but there's an awful lot of activities you can take all of them for. And I got to tell you, they may not be the best boat for everybody, but stay tuned because they may be the best boat for you. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more Florida Sportsman Best Boat. This segment is brought to you by Costa Del Mar. See what's out there. Florida Sportsman, the source for fishing in the outdoors since 1969. Florida's largest fishing and outdoors magazine. Year-round TV with real-time Florida Sportsman and Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Florida's number one online resource. Over 8 million page views a month. Live reports from the water every Saturday morning. Hands-on instruction, seminars, and demonstrations. Books, charts, and more. Become part of the Florida Sportsman community today. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. This week, we'll be featuring center consoles in the 24 to 26 foot range. Dave and Rick started off with the Contender 24 Sport. All right, Rick, we're on the Contender 24 Sport. Well, I tell you what, the console sure looks like a Contender. Well, that's where the similarities stop, though, because Contender has long been known as building fast, tournament-ready boats. This is their first entry into the family boat. And if you look at this, this boat is really, really designed strictly for the family but you can still fish. Dave, I've competed for years in and against contenders in fishing tournaments, and I gotta tell you, this is a new model for them, but they didn't get too far away from their roots. Well, it is a new model, and even the hull. They started with a brand new design from ground zero. They designed the hull to be fast, but carry the extra weight of more people. One of the reasons that they brought this boat to market is, for years now, people have been asking for forward seating, which has never been available in a contender. Well, this boat was designed with really, really nice forward seating. I tell you what, I like that long fish box up front, Dave, with the long lid to it. Makes it, it holds plenty big fish and it's easy to clean. Well, that's speaking to the dual purpose of the boat, family and fishing. Another thing that tells me this is a contender is their built-in bow rails. Dave, when you see the shape and the sheer practicality of this console, you can tell she's all contender. 
Well, what I see what they've designed into this boat is they've kept the stuff that Contender is famous for. No nonsense helm like you're saying, leaner seat. The boat comes standard with a regular T-top, but you can get the optional hard top too, just like in their bigger boats, but they've kept it in a smaller size, but they've added just enough family refinements so that you can bring in a wife and kids. I tell you what, Dave, what's happened to the industry is a lot of manufacturers are getting away from that hardcore tournament fishing every weekend. In today's market, you need to involve the family in your boating. And the boat builders have addressed that. They've answered that need. This boat can fish a tournament. It can also carry your family around in comfort. Especially as the kids get older, if you have teenagers at home, they're not going to stay at home. They want to go with dad on the boat. So you really don't need a hardcore boat at that time. You need a boat that can take everybody. You know, building a great fishing boat's in contender's DNA. That's why the live well's in the stern, round with the glass top and making it easy to see. Well, one innovation on this boat that you've never seen on a contender before, rear jump seats. Here again, consumer demand, people have been asking for it, Contender responded. I can tell you what, Mama's going to like this a whole lot better than she does sitting in the bean bag when you're running offshore. Dave, you know what I see everywhere on this boat? The beauty of simple, okay? There are no hydraulic windshields, there are no, I mean everything, you look at all the way from your cleats to your covering boards, everywhere you look is functional, functional, basic, simple stuff. This whole genre of boats does one thing great in offshore fishes. On a pretty day, let me tell you what, you can put as many fish on this boat as anybody's boat. Well, you know, I love to dive, and these low sides, I actually like that. I mean, the higher gunners are good on some boats, but when you dive, you can swim up to the boat, especially if you're free diving, you don't even need a ladder. You can come right up over the side. Rick, on the 24 Sport, Contender decided to use their integral bracket and only single power instead of twins. Well, Dave, let's talk about that because there's advantages both ways to having one engine versus two and a lot more questions than most people think. For me, I'm a blue water guy. You know it. I love the security of having that second engine. Well, I, I agree with that, but on a boat like this, you're really not going to do a lot of hardcore offshore. You're going to be in the river, you're going to be taking the family, maybe pulling water toys. A single 300 will do the same job as your twin 150s, and it's going to cost me less when I buy it. It could cost me less to operate it. Dave, I understand what you're saying, but as much as I go into blue water, I'll even cross the Bahamas in a boat like this. I want the security of that second engine. You know, Rick, you're right, but outboards are built so reliable nowadays Really, when they break down, it's got to be something catastrophic, and if you're that worried about it, you can always get a towboat membership. Well, they're all a whole lot more dependable than they used to be. And if I'm going to go to that twin engine application, Dave, there's a few questions I've got, okay? How much does it increase the weight on my transom is a factor for a lot of boats. And something that's always real important to me, if I'm going to have twin engines, I want her to be able to plane off on a single engine. Make sure if you lose that engine, you can still get home on the other one. For some people, twins are better. For others, a single will do a great job. Dave, you know there's no one size fits all boat, but my goodness, Contender used 24 feet about as well as you can use 24 feet for this one. Well, I agree. And what they did is they listened to consumer demand. So if you've got a family and you like to fish, this 24 Sport may just be the best boat for you. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more Florida Sportsman Best Boat. This segment is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha forward thinking. The all new F200 inline four stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater, or walleye hunter, the responsive and fuel efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. The all-new F200. Legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. This week we'll be featuring center consoles in the 24 to 26 foot range. All right, Rick, you know, we're on the new Stuart Boat Works 26, and what I love about this boat is it's efficient design. They've used some old technology, added a little bit of new technology to it, just enough to be comfortable, but it's a really clean boat. It's got everything you need, and it's not cluttered with all the fancy stuff you really don't. Dave, it's very practical. All right, practical is the first word I think of when I get to this boat. You know, somehow, all through my fishing career, I've ended up being the guy that cleans the boat, okay? This is when I appreciate and maintains the boat. This is when I appreciate the simplicity of the Stuart Boat Works 26. Well, their basic hull is, well, and that's really where we should start because that's what really separates this boat from the other boats. Their hull, it's an older design, 
that really works today just as well as it did you know, years and years ago. They've got a really, really deep entry forward, and then it tapers to a keel as you go aft. The bilge is rounded, so you don't have the, the deep V, but what that does is the boat is super stable, as you saw as we were out there. It planes off really, really easy. I guess it really doesn't even plane. It just comes up and runs. David goes to its running attitude almost instantly when you throttle up on it. There is no big bow rise that you and I incidentally can't see over the top of. Exactly. She just gets up and rides at her attitude. Now, let me tell you something. It's just, Dave, everything's a compromise. We've talked about this. Every square inch of a boat's a compromise. If you've got a deep V and the deep V continues aft, you may do better in a head sea than another boat. But you put three guys on the side of a deep V boat and they feel like they're going to roll over. This boat sits in the water much more stably. Right. Well, the design, you're going to give up a little top end speed. Other boats that, ta that have the design you're talking about with the deep V, they're going to be a little bit faster. But if you're okay with giving up some of the top end speed, you're going to make it up and ride. You really are. And you're going to make it up when you're fishing. She's a more stable fishing platform than a deep V hull that carries her dead rise all the way to the transfer. Well, like I said earlier, they based the design of the hull on some older technology, but it's built with all the new infusion technology in the whoa, fiberglass. Whoa, 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 boat builder. Infusion? <laughs> well, the simple way to explain it is an open mold process, which is still a good way to build a boat, and they still do it today and have been doing it for years. You have a laminator that is spraying resin, or he's running it through a chopper gun, and he's applying the resin to the dry cloth, where in infusion, you're letting the vacuum not only suck the resin into the material, but it suck it through the material so you get really good 100% saturation. It just seems to me like they'd be more consistent. Very consistent, easy to control, and the EPA, they keep tightening their grips on the manufacturers. This cuts out a lot of the styrene emissions, and so the EPA loves it. Dave, let me show you a few things I love as a fisherman. First off, see how this grab rail right here is recessed from the rod holders? You can put your hands there comfortably and move them. You know what I like even better? This live well is directly below where people are going to stand while they're riding with a glass lid. Not only is it big and round, it's clear on top. I will know the minute I have trouble with my live well if it gets stopped up. This is the most efficiently laid out helm I've seen. Well, seawater is very heavy, even the weight of the bait that's in there. And when you put that in the center of the boat, it just helps the CG of the boat so much better. It absolutely does, Dave. You put it over to one side, you've got to constantly adjust to it on your tabs. Well, like you were saying earlier, if it's in one corner, if I want to get bait at the same time you do, we're going to be bumping into each other. Here, both of us can dip in there at the same time. Rick, I love the design of this helm. Let's go forward. I want to show you a feature that Stuart designs into their boats that I really like. From a boat builder's perspective, this is really hard to do. They have a toe kick that's all the way around the console and all the way around the fish box for safety and for ease of walking around the boat. You don't stump your toe. This is not an easy way to build the boat. It's expensive, but you know what? It's what they wanted in their design. What makes it hard? Well, it's just you have to have a two-piece mold instead of a one-piece mold that you can just bolt down. I see. So it's worth the effort because what you get is it's a, it's a yacht-like look, and it's on there for a reason. Oh, it's much more comfortable, too. You can stand a whole lot closer to the top than you can if you, don't, if you can't put your feet under it. Another thing I really like, Rick, is the design of their T-top. It's hard top. It's custom-made. You can either get it in a Key West top that clears your rod tips, or you can get it in a full top if you're not worried about putting rod holders on the side of the console. Not only that, Dave, but it's got tracks for your curtains. Your curtains are an easy slide in, slide out on a choppy day. Dave Stewart Boat Works has my favorite fish box arrangement ever. I love these long, what they call, coffin boxes. It's easy to gaff a fish, throw him right in there, not have to chase him around the deck to get him in, okay? Not only can they serve as a fish box, They've got a bait tray in them, take out the divider, it's a fish box, leave it in, it's the perfect bait tray cooler. Well, it also makes great dry storage. If you're not fishing, you don't can put ice in there. Anything you put in there with that lid closed, it's going to stay dry. That's exactly right. And Dave, let's say you catch as many fish as, so I don't know, I do. Then maybe that's not a big enough fish box for you. They've even got another one down beneath it. Well, if this is full of fish and ice, you're never going to lift it. One thing Stuart Boat Works has done, they've got a stainless steel actuator in there. There's a button at the helm. This whole thing will lift up automatically so you're not having to do it by hand. Oh, wow. So you can have your before noon catch and your afternoon catch. Right. Or you can put your ice below and transfer the ice to the top box during the day as you start putting fish in. But they're in. both super insulated. There's as good insulation in the bottom box as there is the top. Yes. They use the same exact two inch insulation on the bottom box that you find in this cooler. That's going to hold ice a long time. 
All right, Rick, you know, we both like the Stewart Boatworks 26 because of its simplistic design, but after the break, I'm going to show you a boat that is loaded out with features. Well, that's what Best Boat's all about, Dave. What may be the best boat for you and I is not necessarily the best boat for everybody else. What we want to find is the best boat for you. Stay tuned for this week's Florida Sportsman Best Boat Seminar. When you buy a Florida fishing license, you support research, conservation-minded fishing, law enforcement, habitat restoration, hatcheries, access to fishing, and programs that connect kids to the outdoors. It's an investment in the future. Those are the reasons I do. That's why I do. These are the reasons I do have my Florida fishing license. Please say, I do, too, and get your Florida fishing license. When filming for Florida Sportsman Best Boat, the cast and crew stayed at Pirates Cove Resort and Marina in Stewart, Florida. Family owned and operated, featuring 50 renovated rooms with an outstanding restaurant and a full service 50 slip marina. Here's Dave and Rick with this week's Florida Sportsman Best Boat Seminar. Hi, I'm Dave East, boating editor of Florida Sports and Magazine. Let's talk a little bit about changing the color of your boat, because really you've got three choices. Obviously, you can order whatever color you want when you order your boat new, and it'll be in a gel coat finish. You can have the boat painted with the Emeron type of uh, marine grade paint, or you can put a wrap on your boat. And in wraps, most people think of these really colorful graphics, and it's got the fish jumping into your sponsors all over the side, and that's what the tournament guys do. But you can go with a solid color wrap. And the advantages of a wrap, there are many. One, they protect the boat. They keep the UV from attacking your original gel coat finish. Two, here again, you can choose whatever color you want. The process, it can be done out of the water. It can be done on the trailer. It can be done in your driveway. A guy can come to your home and do it. He can meet you at the marina. It's not going to tie your boat up more than a day. They'll put whatever color you want. But the biggest advantage of a wrap is someday you may want to sell your boat. And if you're going to do that, now, now, now not only do you have to sell the boat, you've got to sell the color of the boat too. So you've got to find a person that likes your boat, likes the way you have it laid out, but then likes the color. This boat's blue. Maybe the guy you're going to sell it to likes red or yellow. So that's going to be a problem. The nice thing about a wrap is you can pull the, the uh, wrap off and go back to your original color, which in most cases is going to be white. A lot more people out there like white boats than they do blue or red or yellow. Not only that, when you get done and you pull the wrap off, you've got that nice factory gel coat finish on the outside. So if you want to change the color of your boat, look at a wrap first. This could be your most economical way to do it, and it's going to protect your boat better than any other process. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. This week we're featuring center consoles in the 24 to 26 foot range. Rick, we're aboard the Everglades 255, and this boat is so loaded with features, it's hard to know where to start. We've got comfortable bow seating, got a built-in windlass, and a 26-foot center console. Oh, I'll tell you where we can start. Let's talk about this windshield. If it's slick and hot like it is so often in the summer, you can run with it all the way down, start to pick up a little chop, raise it some to block the spray from getting to you, and if you get in heavy seas or heavy rain squall, just raise it all the way up. It all happens hydraulically. It even has a little sprayer and a built-in windshield wiper. Rick, one look at this helm, and you know it's an Everglades. You're exactly right, Dave. That's the signature of their boats. And let me tell you something. This helm is so secure feeling, you almost got to be careful about getting a false sense of security. You've got your grab rail right here for when you're running the boat. This is like being in an airplane cockpit. Remember, you put that windshield up, you're out of the wind altogether. Yeah, it's almost like you're in an enclosed pilot house. Yeah, Dave, Everglades does a great job of getting you out of the elements, even if the elements aren't so kind outside. Well, the design of their center console, I've got plenty of room to walk around, yet there's still enough room for a head down there. Rick, behind the helm, you've got a really neat tackle station. I've got storage here, cup holders, places for your lures. The Yeti cooler is on a slide out. You have a sink and a lot of water pressure. All right, now you've told me what impresses you as a boat builder. Let me show you what I like as a fisherman, okay? I love this closed transom like this. Reminds me of fishing out of my old inboard boat. Well, it lets you get all the way against the transom of the boat. You're not taking up all this room for the outboards sitting in here. You can reach a rod around the back end of those outboards very easy without cutting your fish off in the prop. Not that I would know anything about that. Rick, again from the boat builder side, one thing I love is the access to the systems. If you can get to it, you're gonna maintain it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I don't, 
I don't know where some of the pumps are on my boat because I can't see them readily. You're exactly right. One look into there, you can see what needs to be cleaned out and sprayed off. Your live well's here with a clear lid so you can see your bait. And for your family, this folds down into seating. Well, for divers, they're gonna love the fact that you've got an easy access door on and off the transom. And like I said before, for maintenance, you've got an actuator that'll lift this up, you can get to all of your systems. Holy smokes, Dave, that looks like a 45 sport fish. I mean, the wires are bundled perfectly, they're labeled perfectly, it's ideal. For down the road maintaining this boat, you can see exactly where every wire goes and what it does. And if it's corroding. Now you're in a boat that's really meant for blue water along with the other two boats that we brought. So if you're ready to take that leap, go out the inlet, go out and chase maybe kingfish, dolphin, yellowtail or whatever, especially for somebody who's just getting into it, this would be a great place to start. Well, it's a commitment in a lot of different areas. Of course it's more cost, of course it's more power, very probably twin engines. Really cuts down on where you can park it, Dave. A lot of neighborhoods have restrictions on how big a boat you can have in your, in your driveway. Not only that, Dave, two people can fish this boat comfortably. I can see myself kite fishing for sailfish in Palm Beach with this thing with the breeze. It is really laid out to where there's nothing for you to tangle your kite lines on. It's a well done boat. So if somebody's looking to get out into blue water but doesn't want to take that leap into a lot larger center console, this may be their best boat. Dave, there's a lot of features on this 255 Everglades. There's a lot to like on this boat. Well, that's what Best Boat is all about, finding the best boat for you. A popular size center console is a boat in the 24 to 26 foot range. They're extremely versatile and allow you to fish inland waters, plus give you serious offshore capability. If you're looking to stretch your trips further offshore, have room for four to six people, possibly add a head or second outboard, a center console in the 24 to 26 foot range might just be the best boat for you. Dave, we've looked at three boats in the same category today, but they've each carved out their own special place in the marketplace. Well, you're right, Rick. We have the Stewart Boat Works, old school design, but with a lot of new type technology. And then you had the Everglades, maxed out features. And then you had the Contender, aimed solely at the family, and something that's a new venture for them, but looks really nice. Well, it does, Dave. And none of these boats are perfect for everybody, there's no doubt. But there's something there if you're a hardcore fisherman, there's something there if you want maximum luxury, and there's something there if you want to take the family out on the water. Right, well if you're looking for a decent sized boat that's easy to pull, light on the budget, easy to maintain, inshore fishing, offshore fishing, a 26 foot center console may just be the best boat for you. For more information, Go to floridasportsman.com to our boating page to see more information about the show. And we'll see you on the next episode of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Be sure to join us next week when we cover 24 to 26 foot bay boats on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Each month, turn to Florida Sportsman for the best in boating and fishing coverage.